What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 136. And we start today's episode off with a recap of the budget, 42.5 million pounds remains after the two big signings we made in the last episode, our first season and our first transfer window were Atletico Madrid and our first two signings were... Well, you know who, Ivan Tony the Shocker and his little bro, Oli Shaw, coming to the Metropolitano for my first season at Atletico. Of course, I wasn't going to come here on my own. I need my boys with me, and they have arrived. We spent over £110 million getting the pair of them in, but I would definitely say this. Worth every single penny, I'm sure. Because I know if we're to win the treble, like the board have asked me to do, I need my boys to help us get there. So yeah, Tony and Shaw are in. And as you can see on the transfer list right here, so many players still remained on the list. We weren't really getting that many bids. And it was really beginning to frustrate me because there were quite a few players there that could raise a decent amount of money. The only sales we've had so far are for just a million pounds or two million pounds or a loan deal there in that case of that young uh, English left midfielder. But finally... We did get a bid for someone that could raise a bit of serious money. That was for Thomas Partey, the Ghanaian midfielder. And I must admit, this one was quite a harsh sale. Because Thomas, of course, has been at Atletico Madrid for so long. And I love his stats. I love the way he plays the game as well. However, at 32 years old now, I think it's time for a change here at Atletico Madrid. And if we are to win the treble, we need to make some sacrifices. And Thomas has been here for about a decade now, but at 32 years old, he's only going to get worse. And I think it was time to say goodbye as we look for a fresh start. So we agreed a, a deal of £25 million with Hanover 96, the German side. And finally, some serious bids started coming in here. Uh, Saponjic was wanted by Bristol City uh, for £10.3 million. And also that Uruguayan left midfielder whose name I'm never going to be able to pronounce was also inquired about as well. But yeah, Thomas did go to Germany for £25 million. And if we are to make some new signs, we need to start selling some players and selling some players that can actually get us some real money. Not just those knockoff bids for about a million or two million pounds. But also as well, I found it's quite interesting here. You've seen since the season began, that we've had quite a few release clauses getting met for a few of our fringe and deadwood players. But Manchester United, knowing that there's been a change of ownership here at Atletico Madrid, decided to be cheeky and meet the release clause of Palacios of 105. 5.2 million pounds and this guy is our 88 rated 26 year old central midfielder now that is a huge amount of money that's about the same thing we got for Ferro last season with Roma but Palacios has the stats that I absolutely love in a player high high work rates 97 stamina he's all round just absolutely perfect with four star skill moves and four star weak foot as well I'm so desperate to use him in this year's career mode so so I said to Ezekiel, it's your choice, mate. If you want to stay here, you can, and we'll give you a wage increase if you want it, or you can go to Old Trafford. The choice is yours. And in the end, he decided to stay. He said, yes, I'm gutted that Diego Simeone has left. He was my gaffer, but also a role model to me. But do you know what? I believe in you, Docs. I believe in you, gaffer. He said, I believe in you. And I said, I'm glad to hear those words, mate, because I've got big plans for you this season. Palacios is going to stay. He decides not to go to Old Trafford and sign a new four-year extension here at Atletico Madrid instead. And I was relieved as well because Palacios, you know, I've seen his stats this season in career mode and I saw those stats there. Uh, he just embodies everything I love in a player. High stamina, high, high work rates, four-star week, which is complete all-round player. I'm so glad he's going to be staying here. So Palacios to stay at the Metropolitano and not go to Manchester United and following the sale of Thomas we did have enough money to bring in a new player and with Atletico Madrid the area that needs strengthening more than any other at this club is the centre-back role. Imeric Laporta is 90 overall but he's now in his 30s. Nathan Ake is only 84 overall and he's also in his 30s. The best next centre-half is Reyes who's just come in at 79 overall but he's also 32. We need some younger centre-back here with Roma and I knew just the man I wanted to bring in. We signed him last season in the summer with Roma. What a player he was last season and I've said it, this guy has got the potential to become the best centre-back in world football in just a couple of years time. Emmanuel Ayer who we signed from Spau last year. He only spent one season at the Stadio Olimpico but now he's coming with me to the Metropolitano. Our first three signings all from our former side, Tony Short and now Emmanuel 
Emmanuel Ayer. It's a huge, huge, huge transfer for £53 million. But at 21 years old, 85 rated, this guy's stats are extraordinary. 99 jumping, 91 strength, 88 sprint speed with low high work rates at 6 foot 5. Tell me where the negative is with this guy. Physically, he's the all-round player. Defensively, he's superb. If we can train his passing stats up and get those really good as well, there won't be a single negative to this guy. Emmanuel Ayer is in. He's going to become the best centre-back in world football in a couple of years. Mark, mark my words. He's on his way to becoming just that. And he becomes our third signing with Atletico Madrid for £53 million. So all three of our signings coming from our former club. Tony, Shaw, and now Emmanuel but believe me, if we're going to win the treble with Atletico Madrid, these are the players we need. I need the players that have done it with me over the past couple of seasons at Roma. And I'm so glad that Ayer is in because, again, this guy, like Tony and Shaw, he's got to come with me everywhere we go. So delighted with that. But also as well, when I was scouting for some Spanish talent, I found this guy playing for Valencia. And I must say, I was very excited about him. Now, after the signing of Ayer, we had very little money left over. But I managed to agree a deal of 12.75 uh, million pounds for him. He's a 19-year-old, 75-rated centre-half, playing at the Mestalla right now. And uh, he wanted a wage cut, but of course I decided not to do that because I just don't like the idea of exploiting the broken contract negotiations. But either way, this guy here looks the real deal. And he looks like Emmanuel Ayer, Mark II, or the Spanish version of Emmanuel Ayer. Alvaro Juan Lopez Huesca signs for 12 and 3 quarter million pounds. Our fourth signing overall, our first signing outside of former players, and as he takes the number six, you take a look at the guy's stats here at just 19 years old. Yes, 75 overall isn't the highest, but for a 19 year old, it's very impressive. But he's six foot four with 95 jumping, 85 strength, 84 sprint speed, 82 agility. He's got the exciting prospect tag as well. And I think he and Emmanuel Ayer, with medium high work rates, are going to be one heck of a formidable partnership for years to come. When Laporta starts aging, and he is now in his 30s, when he starts decreasing in rating, I think he and Emmanuel Ayer could be the new starting CV partnership. I'm very excited for him. He looks superb. So, Lopez Huesca is in our fourth signing overall with Atletico Madrid. As we also see here, I'm going to have a go here, uh, Shia Pacase uh, gets sold as well. And also see here that Martinez uh, gets sold as well as Saponjic, two of our strikers here going to the Premier League. Uh, Martinez off to Goodison Park and Saponjic off to Ashton Gate as well. Those three sales combined for around 50 million pounds and of course the board would skim a bit off the top and therefore our budget had now increased to around 40 million pounds so we still have money to play with even after those four big signings there of Aya, Tony Shaw and of course the new man in Lopez Huesca the teenage talent too so around 40 million pounds in our budget after those three sales right there and we had a bit here for Masraoui and uh, Nusser Masraoui this is a right back a Moroccan right back that can also play central midfielder as well and like I said in the last episode we, when we inherited this Atletico Madrid side I noticed we had like four or five right backs, but no official left backs, which I thought was quite strange. So I'm happy to sell quite a few of the right backs here because uh, Dominguez is going to be our starting right back in this team as he can play there. And with Eddie Howe, we agreed a deal of, I think it was 25.5 million or maybe 26 million pounds for him. Yeah, 25.5 million pounds for the Moroccan. He's got high, low work rates. Whilst he is 84 overall, I don't really want him to be playing right back in this team because Dominguez has a high defensive work rate. And of course, we want our fullbacks to go for because they operate as wing backs in my system but with a low defensive work rate I wouldn't be too confident in his ability to defend so he's off to the vitality for 25.5 million pounds so another big sale there as our Atletico Madrid rebuild continues and as we are now a week away from the season opener against Girona after we got the season ticket sales added to our budget along with that sale too we now had a transfer budget of around 80 to 82 million pounds so loads of money left over even after after our four signings there. And then we had yet another bid for one of our right backs, our multiple right backs here. Uh, RB Leipzig, who had just signed our Uruguayan left midfielder, now wanted to take this Swiss right back that can also play holding midfield as well uh, to Germany. He's 82 rated. Kevin, is it Kevin Rook? Kevin Roig? Not too sure, but uh, Kevin. Let's just call him Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, we uh, we had this bid here from uh, RB Leipzig. Please, someone get that reference there. And uh, of course, he's valued at 18 million pounds. But 82 overall, still looks pretty decent, quite versatile.
versatile as well. So I thought we'd get a bit more money uh, from him. And uh, we asked for 26.5 million pounds and RB Leipzig decided to meet that right off the bat. So 26.5 million pounds. So we're going to raise over 50 million pounds for our two right backs there. That'll take our budget up to around 100 million pounds after that sale goes through. And as we take a look at our full transfer shortlist, now I've done all of my scouting on mostly young Spanish talent and some big Spanish names around in world football right now. This transfer shortlist was absolutely massive. I couldn't wait to bring in some more players here as we continue to try and make this, uh, make this Atletico Madrid side younger and also better and more exciting for the future as well. So we take a look at our full transfer shortlist here. Unfortunately, a lot of the players that I wanted to sign, uh, including that left back there that plays for West Ham, uh, we weren't able to get because it said they'd just recently joined the club. But there were loads and loads of names on the shortlist. I really wanted Carl Zalenia as well. For those who watch my football manager say with Cardiff last year, cocky Carl's. I'd love him at the Vicente Calderon. Sadly, couldn't get him. But uh, you take a look at the current players on our shortlist right now. Again, most of them are Spanish players. There are a few players that aren't. you still got Orsolini there, Barry Walsh is still there uh, as well and a couple of free agents too from different nationalities but for the most part, the most part they're Spanish players because again the Atletico board want us to build a Spanish core and out of all the names on the shortlist right there the one player that stood out to me as a mandatory signing was this guy right here Carlos Soler 87 rated 28 years old right midfielder that can also play central midfield as well and the reason why I couldn't afford to pass on this guy is because of this a 42.5 5 million pound release clause in his contract at the Mestia right now that is three and a half million pounds lower than his current market valuation so we take advantage of that and we agree a deal of uh, 100 grand a week on a four-year contract for the 28 year old midfielder and I could not afford to pass up this absolute bargain because that's what it is it's an absolute bargain 87 rated right mid that can play central midfield with a four star weak foot and again you know if the release clause wasn't there we're probably paying around 65 to 70 million pounds to get him instead Due to that release clause, Valencia failing to get it out of his contract, we take advantage of that and sign him for a dirt cheap £42.5 million deal. And with Jao Felix and Ivan Tony up top together, they're going to want a good supporting cast around them to help them get the goals this season. Well, Carlos Soler's best stat is crossing at 93. So I feel very confident he'll chip in with quite a few assists this season. Soler is in, and again, what a bargain. That is absolute bargain. Just like Mandragor in uh, season one with Roma we take advantage of that super low release clause 42.5 million pounds he'll become our new starting right midfielder I'm not sure whether I want to play with inside forwards in this team like we did with Roma having Keane on the left and Zaniolo on the right we could swap he and Lamar around so Lamar can cut in from the right shoot on his left and Soler can cut in from the left shoot on his right I'm not too sure we'll see how it goes to begin with but for now we'll have them playing on each side of the pitch Soler on the right and Lamar on the left uh, a attacking down the flank on their preferred feet. But I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm not against changing it, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, still, following the signing of Soler, we still have quite a lot of money remaining in our budget of around £37 million. And let's take a look at the squad here. It was getting thinner after we were selling so many of our fringe and deadwood players. We need to continue to fill it out. And I still want some new centre-backs in this team as well and some younger centre-backs too. And I found this guy on the shortlist. And oh my goodness, I thought Lopez Huesca was the man for the future in a centre-back role alongside Emmanuel Ayer. How did I miss this guy? Sergio Mia Martinez, a Spanish centre-half playing for RC Lons in Ligue 1 right now. 79 rated, 20 years old, 6 foot 1. Oh my goodness. And Diego Reyes right now is a new signing with Fledico, so I couldn't sell him. I couldn't agree to put him on the transfer list because he's a new signing for the new season. What you can do when you get a new signing but you don't want to use them is you can swap them. So I asked RC Lons if they would want Diego Reyes. He's 32 years old and 79 overall. So the same rating as Mier Martinez. But we've got no plans to use him as he's 12 years younger. We agreed a deal of £20 million plus Reyes for the young Spaniard. And 
as you see with uh, Diego Reyes here, he's 12 years older than Mia Martinez and he's on 63 grand a week. I've got no plans to use the Mexican in my first season. So if we can get him off, off the books, get his salary off the books, bring in someone younger on a cheaper contract, despite being the same overall as well, I'm more than happy to see Reyes leave in a part exchange deal. So Reyes is off to France and Sergio Mia Martinez agrees a four-year deal on £40,000 a week. And Emmanuel Ayer... Meet your new partner in crime for the future. Laporte is going to be your starting centre-back alongside you this season, but this is the guy for the future. Mia Martinez is in, and I have to say, this guy is so goddamn exciting. 20 years old, but already has 93 strength with 92 sprint speed. At his peak, with the potential to be special, this guy is going to be one of the best centre-backs in world football. He and Emmanuel Ayer could become the greatest centre-back duo of all time. Low, high work rates, just like I uh, six foot one. So, you know, not the tallest, but look, I'm six foot one. So let's just say we're still very tall. But either way, he and Emmanuel I are together. He's not going to take Laporte's place in the first season as he has 11 ratings lower than the Frenchman, but he's also 11 years younger. He and Emmanuel I are for the future. That is going to be one of the most formidable CB partnerships of all time. I cannot wait for him to hit his peak with the potential to be special. Oh yeah, baby. I cannot wait. What a steal that's going to prove to be in years gone by for £20 million. But uh, following that, we still had a little bit of money remaining in our budget after the signing there of Sergio. And I wanted to bring in a new goalkeeper as well. You know, right now, of course, we've got Jan Oblak as our starting goalkeeper. And we had a couple of backup goalkeepers that are both 71 overall. But I want a good young uh, young goalkeeper for the future, like we signed with Saberli uh, for Roma last season. And uh, there were a couple of players for Real Sociedad here, including Prats Bastidas who is 19 years old, but 70 overall. That could be very talented uh, for the future, although I didn't know his potential just yet. But we agreed a deal of £6,000 a week on a five-year contract, so a very cheap salary for him. But he's already good enough to sit on our bench at 70 overall. So he's not the best backup goalkeeper out there, but at 19 years old, you know he's going to be pretty decent in the future now that he's already 70 overall. And Bastidas comes in. He'll take the number 13 jersey. I've given Old Black the number one because he should be the number one here. 2.15 mil, a dirt cheap deal for a young goalkeeper with 79 kicking already. So it is potential he could possibly have 99 kicking. And I'd absolutely love that as a sweeper keeper. So perhaps Bastidas in. He's, uh, he's one rating lower than uh, San Roman right now, but he's also nine years younger as well. He's got the comes across his trait too. Not too happy about that because we've seen uh, since the patch that goalkeepers do come across a lot and sometimes get caught in no man's land. But anyway, Prats Bastidas is in. And I don't think I am going to sign a good backup goalkeeper. I trust Jan Oblak wholeheartedly as our number one. Goalkeepers very rarely get injured or suspended. So I think I'll probably just keep Prats Bastidas as our backup goalkeeper for Jan Oblak. He becomes our seventh signing of the trans transfer window already as the rebuild continues with Atletico Madrid and I'm loving how this team is shaping up for present and for the future as well. Laying down the groundwork, bringing in that young Spanish talent and with four days to go before the season opener against Girona, we're not done yet. But that was today's episode of Career Mode Guys, so a big thank you for watching if you have enjoyed it and if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like. Much love to you all, have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode very soon featuring the season opener and my first game in charge of Atletico at home to Girona and a couple new signings as well very soon.